Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Who done did it? We have no no idea. This, you know what? This calls for a game of Clue. By playing Clue, we can determine who is the criminal. Or we can do our best uh, Tim Curry impersonation. Why Tim Curry? No, no, no. It was the body corn with the rotten sandwich behind the trash can. Oh no. Fight all if you crack the case. Sounds legit. <laughs> so. So it's legit. So, anywho, uh, in today's episode, we will be reviewing My Little Pony Tell Your Tales Season 1, Episode 7. Fool Me Once. Fool, 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 yeah, it's Fool Me Once. Oh, wow. Okay. So, in this episode, Hitch discovers that numerous items have gone missing around town. Who might the devious mastermind be? And will Hitch manage to return everything that was missing? So, before we start, first impressions are in order, and Silver, what do you think? Well, uh, last time we talked about how Hitch was very different in the show than the movie. I think this one really cements it. Uh, it's My Little Pony, so I didn't really expect a criminal mastermind, and when we get to the big reveal, it's like, oh, okay, that, that seems innocuous enough, but... It's more watching Hitch conduct the investigation, or lack thereof. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, Hitch, what hath become of thee? Ah, uh, yeah, but you know, now I'm going to hold my tongue. Um, Jacob, what about you? First impressions? Yeah, not a particularly good uh, look for what uh, Hitch has been reduced to in this episode. And, well, let's just say... This look really doesn't, uh, well, let's just say, uh, do him justice. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. All right. And as for me, this was a fun episode where we get to see Hitch doing his job, which is a rarity to say in shows nowadays. I mean, we... Pff, the more I think about it, the more G4 did jobs. We, we see Pinkie Pie bake, we see Applejack farming, we see Rarity sewing clothes, we see Rainbow Dash doing Rainbow Dash things, and Fluttershy being her awesome self, and Twilight doing her princess stuff. So, yeah, all, all six. Wait, no, we didn't get to see Twilight doing the princess stuff. That's what. That was one of the problems. <laughs> what was the problem? It's like, she read books on the taxpayer's dollar. That was her, that was her princess stuff. She, oh, the pain. She was trying to understand how to do stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. But yes. How to handle being kidnapped for the 10th time. Written by Princess Celestia. Damn straight. <laughs> yeah, but, um, so yeah. Uh, I guess first impressions are out of the way, so if you guys at home have not watched this yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So, uh, let's start off with, well, the new trend that we're trying to do, character spotlight. So, funny enough, last time we started off with Hitch, this time around we're going to start off with Hitch. So, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, going to go try to go first. So, we see Hitch here doing his job. Basically being the sheriff of the town, uh, problem solving, and um, start doing reports and whatnot, or, or trying to do his job. And yeah, it's, I, I don't know if that's how you do your job, but it's a bit unorthodox, and it's really cool. And yeah, it's, he's, he's doing his job, but at the same time too, it's clearly stated that he's understaffed because of what Sprout did. Uh, he's is he a free man, by the way? 
Actually, I'm, I'm trying to recall if this is the episode that had the the infamous wanted poster. Yeah, this is the one that has the wanted poster. That's why I'm trying to ponder, like, he's not in jail or he's not what, but there's a wanted poster of him. So, what's going on? Well, uh, well, since he's not being hunted, I think they wanted, have you seen this pony? He's at least five days late to work. Ah, uh, okay, something, okay, something that I call, all right. But, um, where was I? Yes, uh, we, we see that Hitch is busy doing most of the work by himself since uh, he's the only law enforcer in town. Uh, and that part there kind of sucks on his end. And with a lot of disappearing items coming, how to put it, um, just getting reported from ponies everywhere, and he's swamped with work. And... I might be jumping in the gun with the other character, but we see that Zips comes in to, I, I don't know, have a chat with him. And she seems to say, oh, would you like any help? Because he seems swamped. And I think this is foreshadowing for what she might become in the future. I could be wrong. <coughs> but yeah, f for now, Hitch is just trying to do his job but is getting swamped and I think the pressure is getting to him Silver what do you think well let's see here the, there is this mystery going on it's a classic who done it and uh, well here's the thing he was doing he was doing fine as the sheriff with Sprout as his deputy which is which is to say that basically he was doing the job alone. Mm. I mean, losing Sprout does not strike me as a huge blow to his uh, to the work, the police force. The thing is that he's not terribly uh, was getting overwhelmed real easy, and it doesn't seem like the hitch we again we saw in the movie. That hitch was was decisive. He was. Uh, quick to action, and when he spoke, everyone stopped and listened. <laughs> you know, pick up that litter! <laughs> and also, um, he's by the book. Like, I, I remember the scene in the movie where if Pip, sorry, not Pip, um, it was Sunny who was off a bit, like, um, not in line. He, he will just tell her, oh, stand behind the line, or do follow the rules and whatnot. Or is that just me imagining yeah. things? Nope, he, he was very much making sure everyone was following proper protocol. Mm. Yeah. This one, he's a bit more, he seems to have a bit more of a lighter hand. You know, maybe he's maybe the transition has caused him to lighten up a little. Mm. But, but at the same time, he also seems less confident in himself. Do you think it could be because of the new additions, um, the Pegasi and the Unicorns? Mm. Well, that can be a factor, but that doesn't really shake it. I don't know if that would shake his confidence in himself to enforce the rules. Hmm. Probably, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking that he could be uh, tentative on certain rules because, oh, we got he got no idea if um, if he's enforced certain rules, it would um, be insulting to certain uh, creatures like the Pegasi or Unicorn because, oh, this is our culture. How, how could you blah, 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 blah. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Well, he, <laughs> what would be interesting is if he said, you know, there's a, there's a minimum height requirement for Pegasi flying or... Or, you know, uh, uh, you're flying over the speed limit. How do you enforce that? Yeah, and Zip is, all, is Zip is going to be the one that's going to get fined all the time then. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Zip with her gas-powered flight. Oh, God, no. Anything else to add, Silver? Because I, I, I feel like this episode is the 
bad one to do character analysis because like this needs to be almost done scene by scene but I'm gonna try god dang it that's right you go you keep going Norbert you keep fighting but anything else to but honestly I mean this is this is Hitch seeming less confident in himself and less astute at his job yeah and that that I feel like that's a detriment to the character himself like he has a lot of potential but it seems like episodes like this show us that huh someone else could have done it better Applejack probably well Applejack hasn't set herself up as law enforcement I mean she has the hat all she needs is a scarf and a what you call this badge Actually, I'd like to see you judge Dread Applejack. I am the law, y'all. The law. 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 Oh my god, that, that, that meme is so dumb. Take an astrologer to take. Oh, boys. But anywho, Jacob, what about you? What, what do you think of Hitch? Well, I'm surprised that, well, Hitch actually managed to do his job considering, well, his uh, second uh, left hand, uh, his right hand didn't basically do anything when he was just basically skipping on work when he was employed. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. But also at the same time yeah. too, right? Like we all are begging on sandbagging on Sprout, but at the same time too, I'm I'm thinking like he does the remedial stuff, like the day to day. Like, the things that are not that important, like answering the phone calls, taking notes, and so on. Like I feel like that's his job. And that kind of helps Hitch with the day-by-day. Yeah, I don't know. But also, I think uh, the added stress is getting to him, or I'm not sure... Mm-hmm. Did he get mellowed down? Because, well, prior to the movie, I don't think the other creatures that we see now uh, were there. Because, remember, the... the what is it? Bunny corns, the pig snails, and the raccoon corns. Well, I'm pretty sure they're not native to uh, Maritime Bay, considering how things were. Oh no, like from what we saw in the movie, and if I remember right, is that uh, the seagulls and the crabs, that's about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so moving characters from Hitch is the woodland creatures or, or the critters, they seem to be really attached to Hitch. Like how most of Fluttershy's critter companions are with her. Uh, we, we get this with Hitch. And I, I do believe that we, we get to see the whole, oh, um, Hitch is the new Fluttershy for the group. But honestly, I don't see it besides the animal part or the animal aspects. And... Those animals are really into him, and they want his attention. So uh, earlier on, they give they try to give him a sandwich, but he says, "Nah, I got work to do. I'll be off." And we, without going any further with spoiling, um, can't say much. But Silver, what what do you think of the critters? Well, the critters. Well, I find them adorable. They're they're innocent, in a sense. They don't know. What they do uh, is wrong or or damaging mm. to them. It's just we want to help. Sort of that dangerous innocence. Ah, uh, yeah, that's rarely done in media. It's been done, but rarely, from what I can remember, of recent. Hmm. Jacob and uh, oh. Well, it also highlights that they don't view the world the same way as the ponies, so they don't really follow. Uh, they don't really follow the laws. Mm, that's that's true. Yeah, and 
uh, gonna hold my tongue because um, things are go- if I if I say it now it's gonna be spoiled. But yeah, so Jacob, what about you, critters? Well, I think we actually talked about and uh, what was it a few weeks ago? We talked about the uh, why are, why are they that way? But that's beside the point. I don't know. Uh, you'd think that he uh, would have already taught the taught them that well, taking things that aren't uh, theirs is wrong. I don't know. I I find that to be the last thing on the list to do anything because they're animals. Like, yeah, they're they're animals, so yeah. Uh, but moving on to moving on to the last character on the list is Zip. Zip here doesn't do much, but she does a lot in her in in the scenes that she's in. She comes in, she as she offers help, but Zip being Zip wants to do everything himself, and. That's about it. Like she, she doesn't do much, but yet she plays a strong role in this one. And Jacob, anything to say about Zip? Yeah, I think that she's basically the best character in this episode, considering that Hitch is like, well, in his own little world by the end. <laughs> oh, that, that is true. That is true. And so, well, she she is also the voice of reason. Oh, oh. If, you should, if you're just thinking straight, you, pro- you should have by now, like, well, Zip offered herself to help, but I don't know why he's so uh, unresponsive to it. Could be that it's police work, official government business, and he doesn't want a civilian to be involved in it. Or could he... Well, I mean, I, I consider that she basically offered herself for uh, the new position. Well, subtly, but, you know, Hitch is slow on the uptake. And Silver? Okay. Well, let's see. I mean, basically, Zip is... She's showing the beginnings of her detective work. And to be honest, I've always been a little frustrated that she's so big on being a detective when the prospect of becoming queen is on the horizon. She should be, well, I think it would be good for her to wrestle with that more. But for some reason, they're going this detective route. Mm. I mean, she's adamant with not becoming queen like she if, if it's possible she'll just give it to pip and be done with it like she wants her freedom she wants to do her own things and she wants to uh, like for a better word stand on her own two feet and building her building a name for herself on her own merits well that's the thing she, she's gonna have to wrestle and realize that she can do all that as a queen too she could be her own kind of queen. That's true. So, the, I mean, I'm coming off the Masters of the Universe uh, revolution where dodging your responsibility is a constant theme. Mm. Uh, probably I need to watch that and, one too. That sounds fun. Eh, it's a mixed bag. Right. But, yeah, so... Okay, so th- there's no point in hiding it anymore. Um, just gonna cut right into it. So after yep. all the cut away, after all the pep talk and investigation, Hitch gets some sleep, and when he wakes up the next day, he discovers that all the stolen items that were reported are in his room. And somehow thinks that he did it, locked himself in jail. And Zip comes here to be the voice of reason, explaining to Hish that 
seems that all of the items that were stolen are your favorite things. And Hitch discovers or Hitch realizes that, oh, that's true. And the only other person or pony that knows what he likes are his critter friends. And once he confronts them, it seems that they were just doing it because they wanted him to be happy and have a good time. And those are his favorite things from the sunglasses to the art to the orange smoothies and so on. And yeah, like Jacob said, uh, probably should have this talk about stealing is bad for, from the very start or earlier on but they're animals and you wouldn't think that they can do or they can steal stuff but looking at the art gallery heist that they did they know what they're doing and this is not their first time like i'm saying those bunnies are mafias man so well and if we skip right to the ending they also now have a record Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're guilty. So, what, what do they call them? Like the um, furry bandits? Hmm. Trying, trying to think of famous. The Yakuza? The Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, like, let's use that one. The Yakuza. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're just so cute. Got it, Silver. I'm gonna put that in the box. <laughs> the Yakuza. Oh God, that's gonna crack me up for weeks. Oh boys, all right then. Well, if, if anything, their their final photo, especially their mug shots, uh, turns out Hitch is still a stickler for the rules. <laughs> And if only this, if this had come out just a little bit later, I'm sure we would have seen a lot of those Barbie Ken mugshot <laughs> memes with these little guys. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see it. I can see it. Pro- probably the Ken would be the raccoon. <laughs> uh, I really... Just smiling and posing. Mm-hmm. Oh, boys. Yep, yep. Oh, God. That, that is just a fun meme. The pony versions of them are just all over the place. Oh, yeah. So, it, Though I can't see anyone locking up our beloved ponies. How dare. How dare. <laughs> so true. And Jacob, what do you think, man? Uh, overall, it was... Um... The episode was so-so for me, to be honest. Uh, nothing spectacular. Mm, understandable, understandable. And yeah, for, for me, this was just okay, I guess. It's like... I, I would really love it if it was Sprout trying to... How, how to put it? Try, trying to frame Hitch... But I, I guess that would be too obvious. No? Well, then he'd, he'd still be a true villain. And I, I guess they don't, they're trying to move away from that. He's still a brat, but not a villain. Hmm. I don't know. May, I think maybe tell you tell about that he's gonna make a comeback because well I don't know how many months before this was before the first episode of uh, Make Your Mind came out. Hmm. I, I guess, but at the same time too, it, it would be nice that we have a proper bad guy as set up. But in G four, we didn't get that for a while now, so I, I guess we have to wait and see. But for for now, for I mean, we didn't get it for the first season anyway. Mm, yeah. Well, no, we got it at the start of the first season, but that was about it. Mm. But, but f- or perhaps it's, it's, it's like, don't call it a comeback. I've always been here. 
Uh, yep, yep. So yeah. Well, overall, there's there's nothing much we can add because uh, this is this is one of those episodes where it's by the book, and in, in all honesty, after rethinking, after doing the review, a scene by scene would have done perfectly for this one, and yeah, yeah, I I don't know how to respond to that like. Silver, what do you think, man? Like, am I right with this one? Well, this one, it's a, it's a hard sell. It's hard to really know what to do with it other than come up with funny names for the criminal empire. Yeah, the Yakutza is, is a good one. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, um, I guess that's about it. Um, the critters were the one that was stealing stuff, and yeah, that, that's about it, man. So I'm guessing everybody gave their final thoughts. Yep. Silver? Mm. Yep. Uh, I can't say there's much more for me to say about this here thingamabob. It it was an episode. It was silly. Ultimately harmless. But it's, once again, highlights the, diff- the change in Hitch's character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I guess it's worth noting. We didn't talk about this last time. The staff had to start production on Tell Your Tale before the movie was even done. Oh. Uh, those, those, those. That's even worse then. Yeah. So there. In fairness, these folks were doing the best they could with a certain lack of information. Uh, That's also why Izzy seems more more Pinkie Pie esque. Uh, because, well, they they didn't uh get to see the movie uh didn't get to see uh the movie. Before they started recording, yeah, and, and they don't, and that just seems a recipe for disaster. Oh uh, yeah, and to to be honest, right, it's not that bad of a transition change because knowing what we know now, because uh, Tell Your Tales is done before the movie ended, it was kind of close. I I I think the description for Easy is she's like Pinky Bye, but not. 100% like Pinkie Pie, make it your own kind of deal. It's like, hey, can I copy your homework, but make it different so it's not obvious? Well, see, I, I, I oppose that. I do not like the idea of simply saying, this character is the new Fluttershy, this is the new Rainbow Dash. No, no. These are their own characters. There might be some similarities in that we also, you know, we have, we draw comparisons between characters we like. But it's not simply version 2.0. That's true. I totally agree on that one. But you have to have a basis somewhere. And from what I'm seeing with um, the characters here, especially with early episodes of Tell Your Tale and with the info you just gave us, Silver, it's a scenario where they've been told that Izzy is like Pinkie Pie, but she's a unicorn, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm just guessing a lot of descriptions here from what we saw, but yeah. Like, Zip is like the Rainbow Dash, but not really. And her description says she likes science. So, that's a total 180 from Rainbow Dash. Science! Well, I guess it's forensics. <laughs> That's true, but the wiki page, or, or at least the description when uh, they were introducing characters, says she likes science. So, um, yeah, forensics is a, a kind of science. So, yeah. But, yeah. I, I, I'm just saying that, I'm just thinking that it's pretty interesting that they took templates and made it their own, like what you mentioned, Silver. And, yeah, having Hitch become the quote unquote. Fluttershy, sorry. By me saying that, do you think Hitch is the Fluttershy of the party? No, not even. I would give. I would sooner give that to Misty. But when you say we have to have a basis, this is why I like archetypal studies uh, of the Jungian variety. Mm. That's my basis. Mm. Oh yeah, I do remember you did the uh, archetypal uh, videos a long time ago. Yes, and in this way, it's like Izzy is actually more like Rarity, as they are both medials. 
but they don't have the similar personality type. That's part of you know, the fun. Uh-huh. And let's see here. Hitch, well, I would say Hitch is more like the big Macintosh in that they are, they are the lover archetype. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the archetypal is more of a thing than templates for uh, previous characters. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, and that's a better description uh, yes. for them. Well, I know some people use the term archetype as if it were just a stock character, but when I talk about it, it is the core, the very human thing with which we identify in a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I can see it. And it's also like, oh man, this, we, we can do a whole podcast about character creation and making the character like starting from building a character and their personality type to their background and influencing how they you know what silver i just talked myself into an idea that i love what do you think <laughs> you're gonna go ahead probably we, we'll have to talk about it later on we, we'll have to talk about already it i like that idea somehow god damn it <laughs> oh boys but anywho um uh, let's wrap this one up. Uh, any uh, anything more you want guys want to add before we leave? Mm, nope. I'm good. All righty then. I I too am good with this. So yeah, that, that's our review. Hope you enjoy it. So if you like, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitiousgmail dot com. Uh, the show's Twitter account is at MBS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, you. Uh, yeah, give me a second to process things oh my god uh, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes YouTube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date uh, links are in the show notes Silver where can the good people find you you can find me on Twitter DeviantArt and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill and on my YouTube you'll find links to my Ko-fi and uh, Patreon where you can support after the fact and if you feel like it my weekday puns awesome awesome go do so guys Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the Deviant Art under the username Yakafon Todkar, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tom Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself, Like, Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Raquil. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So, you're telling me that a bunch of critters stole painting from an art museum where it's highly guarded? Never underestimate the strength of the Yakuza. Um, no. Da-da-da. Oh.